It's a war story like no other. How do you describe what this adventure was? Strange. Chicky Donahue's strange adventure started at Duck Fiddler's, a bar in Inwood, a neighborhood in northern Manhattan. The bartender, Georgie Lynch, had it on the news, 6 o'clock news. It was November 1967, and on the news, a massive anti-war protest in Central Park. He said, you know, so those guys must be dying. They see something like this on the news over there. You know, somebody's got to go over there and, you know, buy them all a beer or something and tell them that we're behind them, we support them, that we're not like those people down in Central Park. Go to Vietnam? Find buddies from the neighborhood? Bring them a beer? Believe it or not, the bartender was stone cold sober. I said, if you want, I'll go over there and, and I'll buy them all a beer. Just two days later, Chicky, a former Marine and merchant mariner, was on board a wartime supply ship. In his small bag, a list of guys from the neighborhood and cans of beer. What was the expectation you'd actually find these guys from the neighborhood? I had no idea, none whatsoever. Two slow months later, anchored off a of Kenan Harbor, Chicky went ashore. He thought he'd be back in three days. He hitched a ride with some friendly U.S. military police. They have these MP helmets and everything, and I noticed on the helmets that the number was the same number on Tommy Collins' address. So I asked him, I said, uh, uh, any of you guys know Tommy Collins from New York? Oh, yeah, we know Tommy. And I go up the gangway and I said, hey, Tommy! He said, holy crap, Chicky Dunny has said, what the hell are you doing here? He says, I came to bring you a beer. How did that beer taste? Well, let's just say I barely tasted it because it went down so fast. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, Chicky hops an air transport looking for number two on the list, Kevin. Kevin spots you in a pretty remote area of Vietnam. It was about a mile or two long, this road, and I saw the dust coming up in the road, and so I put my hands up like, hey, stop. You, know, you didn't know me. who it was. You just I had no idea who it was. So I stopped and picked him up. And I said, what the hell are you doing out here? And he says, I come over to bring the boy with some beers. And they'll, they'll let him know that, uh, that we appreciate what they're doing. I said, chick, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> and uh, that, that's how I met him. Chicky was able to con his way around Vietnam. It would turn out wearing civilian clothes led those in uniform to assume he was an agent. So you just let him believe that you were Absolute. CIA. Absolutely. He ended up just south of the DMZ, caught in a firefight, sharing a foxhole with his buddy from the old neighborhood, Rick Duggan. So there was some firing going on. I was just making love to the ground at the time. <laughs> Beers consumed, time to leave. I went to where my ship would have been. It had gone. Your ship had left. I had left. Stranded in Saigon, a real world nightmare. A day later, the Tet Offensive began. Chicky decided, I may not make it home, but there is another name on my list. Could you believe your eyes when you saw him? It was a, uh, a pretty big morale booster for me, you know, I was, I was shocked. At the end of the day, this war zone beer run was about more than beer. He came and put himself in harm's way every, just to uh, give us support. And I'll never forget it. You're, you're looking tearful. It brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> Chicky ended up getting beer to four out of the six neighborhood buddies. Of the two he couldn't find, one had gone home early. The other, Richie Reynolds, had been killed in action. To Richie Reynolds, who was killed in action, and also to you guys, who probably didn't get the thanks you deserved, we salute you. Wow. <laughs> I'm still at a loss at how they were <laughs> wow. able to connect the dots here. I mean, Chicky going around an area, imagine going around an area the size of uh, Southern California, from Los Angeles down to San Diego, wandering around. Don't forget there's a war going on. Of course, there are no cell phones. And then right. by happenstance, bumping into your friends. Uh, guys, the book is just out today. And if it sounds like that this book could become a movie, well, Hollywood's already contacted them about making a feature movie here. Who is going to play they Chicky? Should. I mean, come on. That is so good. And by the way, there are no accidents, Carrie. There are no accidents. Carrie, how you. long was Chicky there in total? 
it tur- turns out, I mean, it was a long time. It took him three months. Remember, just the crossing in a ship took more than two months, and then he got stuck. The Tet Offensive, for those who remember historian uh, history, know that, like, that was a big surprise because he thought, wow, I'm going to be getting out of here, and the next thing, that happens. So he was there for a long time, and I should point out that that clothes he was wearing, that check shirt and the pants, once he got off the ship, he wore the same clothes the whole time. I mean, he was covered in mud and dirt. And, I mean, he was just a mess by the time he finally got out it's of Vietnam. It's a remarkable story. That's incredible. What a story. One it's of your remarkable. best ever. Yeah. Well told, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie.